Welcome to another video for chemistry. In this video, I'm going to be discussing electronegativity and polarity. This is a continuation of the videos for covalent bonds. Um, so again, recall that word covalent, covalence, cooperating. So these are elements that share electrons. Now in this case, in this case, we're going to be talking about how these elements share the electrons and, and there's varying degrees of how they share electrons. Some electrons, depending on the pair, will share the electrons evenly, and some will share them unevenly. And they'll share them so, so unevenly that, that, they, that they pretty much teeter on becoming uh, almost an ionic bond. And recall an, ion, an ionic bond is, is a, a bond of elements that share electrons very unevenly, so much so that we pretty much say that they strip the electrons, they take the electrons away. So let's kind of let's dive in and let's talk about what creates this electronegativity. So let's go into the main idea of this video. So a chemical bond's character is related to each atom's attraction for electrons in the bond. And when I say the word character, I am referring to whether it is a polar bond or a nonpolar bond. Okay? And that may not mean much to you right now, but as we dive in, we'll we'll clarify what that means. So polar and nonpolar, okay, in varying degrees. So this chart you have in your textbook, this is an electronegativity value chart. Uh, this is the periodic table. And what this shows us is the amount of electronegativity each element has. Okay, so as you start, from, this is something that we discussed in a previous chapter last semester. And if you remember the pattern for electronegativity, if you start from the left side of the periodic table and work your way to the right, electronegativity increases. Electronegativity meaning uh, electron affinity or more electron hungry. So the elements on the right side are much more electron hungry than the ones on the left. If you look at the top right of the periodic table, fluorine, if you look at the value there, it's 3.98. It is the highest value of any element on the periodic table, meaning fluorine is very electron hungry, has a high electron affinity, uh, has a high electronegativity. And then if you look at the bottom left of the periodic table, you see francium. Francium has a, an electronegativity value of 0.7, meaning it has a very low electron affinity. It wants to get rid of that valence electron more than it wants to gain seven. So fluorine and francium are actually very reactive elements, but for two different reasons. Fluorine wants to, it, 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 de it desperately wants more electron, where francium desperately wants to get rid of that electron. So it makes these very reactive. In fact, if we recall, uh, when we've put sodium in water, sodium is right above, it's about four, uh, four elements above francium on the left side in group number one. If you recall when we put sodium in water and the reaction we got, and remember when we put, uh, you know, when we had to go outside for, when we put a little bit more of sodium into the into water and we had, you know, a little mini uh, explosion there. So you imagine francium. Francium is actually one of the most rare elements on earth and for good reason, because anytime it gets exposed to air or any water in the atmosphere, it, it reacts violently. So let's dive in. Now, here you have uh, an, another chart that you'll see in your textbook. This is electronegativity difference and bond character. Again, that word bond character, right? Again, all that means is, is it ionic, polar covalent, mostly covalent, or non-polar covalent, okay? And, these are the, and, and on the left side, you have electronegativity difference. So how do you use this? Let's, let's go into how you use this chart. So if two atoms that bind together have a difference, an electronegativity difference greater than 1.7, it is an ionic bond. If it has 0.4 to 1.7, it is a polar covalent. So now the bottom three categories are covalent bonds, but there are three different levels of covalent bonds. So the first one, which we have our arrow on, this type of polar covalent bond means that they don't share evenly at all. One is way more electronegative than the other. And in the middle, if it's less than 0.4, then it is mostly covalent. And they're sharing it pretty, uh, pretty evenly. And then the last category is nonpolar, meaning there is no difference in charge from one end to the other. And the, the difference is zero. Okay, so let's, let's, let's put some practical... Um, definitions to these terms because I know it's still probably confusing. So let's look at the periodic table. Let's say we have a bond between hydrogen and chlorine, okay, hydrochloric acid. And if you look at the values for each of these elements, the value for chlorine is 3.16 and we're going to subtract that from the value of hydrogen which is 2.2. And we're going to get a difference, an electronegative difference of 0.96. 
So um, now we want to determine, we want to say, or we want to ask, what kind of bond is it? What kind of bond character does this have? So we can take that value and go to our chart and see that it lies in between 0.4 and 1.7. So then the, this gives us a definition, a clear mathematical definition of what kind of character a bond has. And this we would say is a polar covalent. So that word polar, if you recall from my previous video, you know, when you see when you hear the word polar, first covalent means they're sharing, right? Covalence, they're sharing electrons. And then polar, you know, think North Pole and South Pole, they're opposite ends of the pole, right? Or think polar opposites. One side is one charge, the other side is a different charge. Okay? And that's what we end up getting when we look at an electrostatic potential map. This is a map of showing where the electrons are, are spending most of their time. Recall that chlorine is on the far right of the periodic table, so it's more electron hungry than, than hydrogen, which is on the far left. So the electrons that they end up sharing, that these two atoms share, will spend most of their time with chlorine, indicated by the right color on the right and the blue on the left. Also recall that, that the radius will increase in size. So this is kind of a, uh, you know, an electron density map of sorts that, that shows us where the electrons spend most of their time. And since the electron will spend most of its time on the right side, it develops a negative charge, delta negative. Okay, remember that we show charge by using the Greek under undercase letter of delta. All right, and so the arrow also indicating the direction of the uh, of the electron and, and what direction the electrons are going. All right, so let's look at another example. Let's look at calcium oxide. So again, we're going to do the math here, 3.44 of oxygen minus the 1 of calcium, giving us a difference of 244. We go to our chart now, let's take that value, and we know that it's still greater than, that it is greater than 1.7, so this is an ionic bond, okay? And this should make sense because we, from the previous chapter, ionic bonds are typically uh, made with elements from the far left and the far right. Those are, and, and now you can see now you can maybe see mathematically, mathematical wise, why elements on the far left and the elements on the far right make ionic bonds, okay? Because of their high electronegativity difference. So that means oxygens, the, the electrons that they share are gonna spend most of their time on the oxygen side. So this is ionic. In fact, so much so that, you know, we, we say that they strip the electrons pretty much from, uh, from the metals on the left side. All right, so I want to go back to diatomic molecules. Okay, so diatomic molecules, let's work some of these out with these. Let's look at nitrogen. So you have two nitrogens, so the difference between the two is 3.04 minus 3.04, and of course you're gonna end up with zero. Okay, and it's the same thing with oxygen. All these diatomic molecules, remember from nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and all the way down to iodine, including hydrogen. You're gonna get the same thing. Okay, they're going to keep ending with a difference of uh, an electronegativity difference of zero, which is going to, which means they are nonpolar covalent. Nonpolar again, that means there is no difference from one end to the other. That means one side is positive, the other is positive also. They are sharing the electrons evenly. Okay, creating a uh, creating a nonpolar uh, event. Unlike the uh, categories above, where because the electrons are being shared unevenly, you end up with a difference in charge from one end of the molecule to the other end. Polar, uh, a polar situation. And in this case, again, with the diatomic molecules, this is a perfect non-polar covalent bond. A perfect covalent bond, as they say. Okay, well, that does it for this video with ele for electronegativity and polarity. And uh, stay tuned for more videos on covalent bonds. Thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.